Hey, it's Brian Mudd, and this is my cheat sheet for Friday, December 28th, and video today, and uh, I will have the full cheat sheet video and all the usual commentary back as usual come Wednesday. Uh, I'm in full-on multitask mode right now, so uh, if you'll forgive me, but we'll do the cheat sheet here in video. I'll have a couple of supporting links for a couple of sites I'm going to give you during the course of the video below. All right, so uh, first... Uh, something that I've been uh, keeping up to date on about regarding foreclosures that have occurred over the past several years, uh, we're coming up on an important deadline here. If you were negatively impacted during the housing crisis and have been notified that you might be eligible for some level of compensation as a result of what happened. One, you remember the uh, mortgage settlements earlier in the year, the big banks and even some regional banks? One was at the federal government, the other at the state level. And uh, there are two different ways that you go about uh, letting them know that you are going to verify information and do want to be considered for review for possible compensation. First, at the state level. The deadline in that one is actually January 18th. And those notices went out from the Attorney General Office of the State of Florida, Pam Bondi's office. And when you turn those around, uh, they're taking a look at uh, the robo-signing issues. And if your paperwork was mishandled in a foreclosure that occurred uh, prior to this year uh, during the whole robo-signing mess, then you could potentially be eligible to receive uh, an estimated $2,000. That that's what the average is looking like it could be right now. Um, so far, we've only seen about 43% of all of those that receive notices, return the notices to be considered. Uh, so we still have well more than half uh, that have that opportunity to get it in. Now, again, that one's January 18th. The bigger one uh, that is also uh, attached to a deadline of December 31st is the federal. There was a federal notice that went out uh, with regard to everything from mortgage issues, if there were, were improper practices used by the mortgage company, uh, that you used uh, during the whole housing boom, uh, and some people who were improperly foreclosed on issues of that nature at the federal level, compensation of up to $100,000 uh, is possible. Now, here's the thing. More than 4 million notices went out nationwide uh, for people who may be eligible for compensation based upon what happened. So far, only 353,000, less than 10%, have actually been returned. And... The deadline is Monday. So if you receive these notices, take time over the weekend to answer the questions, get them turned back around, uh, because if you don't, you lose out on that opportunity, and it could be worth a great deal of money to you. Uh, and you no reason to pass it up. Pass that message along to your friends and family as well. Um, now, you always hear this time of year, it's the best time to buy a car. Oh, it really might be this year. First, in any given year, the end-of-year clearance sales have some validity to them. You see, a lot of companies are faced with inventory taxes as they enter a new year. And that means that the less inventory you have on your business, then the lower tax bill you have as a result of carrying it over into the new year. So that incentivizes a lot of car dealers to sell cars before the end of the year to begin with. Well, add into that the added inventory that is sitting on car lots right now. You might remember through the first three quarters of 2012, auto sales were pretty hot. They were one of the brighter areas of the economy uh, in terms of year-over-year -year growth. And a lot of car dealers loaded up on inventory for the fourth quarter, thinking that trend would continue. Well, as we've seen, consumer sales have disappointed uh, in the retail world and including the automotive world. And that means a lot of dealers have a lot of extra cars. Uh, we're actually seeing right now the discounts on new cars as high as 14%. For some GM and, and Chrysler models are occurring. A lot of those 0% financing deals are coming back. Uh, the bottom line is, if you're looking at buying a car over the next couple of months, you might be well served to go ahead and cut that deal before the end of business on Monday uh, because the odds of you actually being able to get a significantly lower than sticker price on that vehicle is higher uh, because of the end of the year situation that's playing out here. One, because of the potential inventory tax. Two, because car dealers have a lot of extra inventory that they anticipated selling that didn't sell sitting on their lots. This is something that might surprise you. You know, I think there's conventional wisdom out there that there is not near as much loyalty in corporate America towards employees, and employees are generally less loyal towards companies. 
And I think there's validity to that to a point. You know, we have those ideas of like our parents' generation to where they ended up with one company and stayed there for almost their entire career. Well, this will surprise you. The average length of time we're spending with a given employer is the longest it's been in 30 years. If you go back to 1983, we were spending five years on average with our employer. That number is now up to 5.4 years. So we actually are seeing kind of a return to that conventional wisdom, people staying with companies longer. Now, it is being uh, thought of as an economic sign of the time situation where there aren't as many opportunities. So with fewer opportunities, you stay where you are. The other thing that I think could play into this that will be interesting watching is the housing market. A lot of people have felt trapped in their current job uh, because they can't relocate with a house that's underwater. So they just stay. And as the housing recovery continues to play out and we see people being able to become mobile again, it'll be interesting to see if that also leads to greater migration in the workforce with people in coming years. Uh, this is a, a story that's worth noting. Um, I'm going to touch on the story and then I'm going to give you a website. Uh, the Better Business Bureau is coming under fire by a watchdog of charities uh, by giving top ratings to some charities that they deem not to be terribly efficient with your money. First, by the numbers. The average charity gets 80 cents on the dollar, has an 80% efficiency rating in getting your money, your donations, to the intended cause, the stated cause of the charity. So anything below 80 is not good. You know, you're, you're pulling down the average. Well, there was one in particular that deals with uh, blind veterans that uh, this watchdog group said only gets 20 cents on the dollar to its intended uh, cause. And the Better Business Bureau had them rated perfectly. And they said it shouldn't be that way. Now, the Better Business Bureau and the Watchdog will fight that out. The Watchdog, by the way, Charity Watch. But here's what you should do. There is a great resource if you want to know how much uh, money and how transparent the charity that you're donating to actually is. It's charitynavigator.org. Charitynavigator.org. That website will give you ratings on a score of a scale of 70. One on accounting and transparency. The other on overall efficiency. For example, take the American Red Cross. I'm just using them because you're familiar with the name. On transparency and on accounting, they had a perfect score, 70 out of 70. When it came to overall efficiency, the rating was 55 out of 70, which is a pretty good score, but certainly room for improvement there. But that gives you an idea, and it's something that you have to go on. Um, again, charitynavigator.org. Netflix going social. Netflix, uh, for years, has been trying to enable you to uh, automatically on Facebook or Twitter be able to make recommendations on movies you're watching, like them and such, and have that all in one seamless uh, combo. But it's actually been illegal because of a privacy act, a video privacy act that had been in place for many years. Well, the government has decided to allow now uh, the ability for social networks and services like Netflix to be able to seamlessly integrate. So starting in the new year, Netflix is going to enable the feature of you to be able to automatically like movies that you see on Facebook and uh, not have to log in separately and talk about a movie. Um, I have a feeling that that will be popular. Also, if you use the free Gmail call service, not Google Voice, but Gmail call service, there's also potentially good news for you. Uh, Gmail, uh, which had that call service set to end uh, as a free service at the end of the year, has now extended it through 2013. Uh, so, again, this is not Google Voice, but if you use the Gmail calling feature, that does remain free through 2013. That's a look at the cheat sheet today. I know it was long, but uh, since I didn't have time to type everything out for you today, I wanted to go ahead and get in most of what I had lined up for you. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you back on Monday.